hello. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, well, as, as you can see there, I'm going to talk about the Espacio Aglutinador, uh, which uh, part of the INSTAR presentation, uh, the other side of the wall, is uh, uh, reflects on some aspects of this project. Uh, sometimes freedom is born out of repression. In March 1994, Ezequiel Suarez individual exhibition at the Havana Gallery was censored. The artist's reaction would have unimaginable consequences. He hung the exhibition in the home of, he, of his partner, the artist Sandra Ceballos, where they both lived and opened it to the public. Its success led them to present a joint exhibition in this same small space three months later. Espacio Aglutinador has been born. An independent, not-for-profit not for space is still active today, an unparalleled case in the context of Cuba, almost a miracle. These two artists set out to develop a permanent program of exhibitions and other activities, seeking the help of the critic Orlando Hernandez, who would be, uh, become a close collaborator. The name of their project clearly indicated its intentions, to create a space that was inclusive and participatory with exhibitions by both renowned artists and those who are unknown, underappreciated, or forgotten, as well as concerts, talks, theater, literary readings, and other cultural activities. An open, free space governed by a spirit of community, exchange, tolerance, generosity, independence, and the questioning of power since its very origins. An unusual example of Lumbung in Havana that has much in common with the call of Doc Documenta 15. Uh, thanks to the vision, seriousness, and perseverance of Ceballos, who continued with the project after separating from Suarez in 1999, and the warm welcoming of the cultural community, Aglutinador has managed to remain active despite its hostile environment. If efforts like these are difficult to keep afloat anywhere in the world, under any circumstances, think about the significance, the significance of doing so in the face of government antagonism. Over the years, Aglutinador has inspired the creation of other independent spaces in Cuba, but only it has achieved permanence earning a respect that has made it a legend. The space has been an unparalleled case, not only because of its long autonomous existence, but because of the singularity of its perspective and its program. Cuba is an extremely centralized country that continues to follow a Stalinist institutional model. Civil society was almost completely destroyed in the late 1960s, when all private economic activities were prohibited and their assets confiscated, including jobs carried out by individuals like plumbers and cobblers. Something similar happened with the private uh, organizations which were also dismantled or subjected to strict control. The museums, art centers, galleries, art schools, 
cultural centers and arts organizations are property of and administered by the state. Only in the last few years have some private galleries been allowed under a policy of looking the other way uh, while surveying their activities and content. The Havana Biennial and other artistic events are also under the authority of official institutions. This centralized system allows the state to maintain control over cultural life, frequently exercising censorship and repression. But they have also been forced into some tolerance by the pressure put by artists and other intellectuals, as, in, as, as is the case of Aglutinador. In the 1980s, what is known as uh, the new Cuban art broke with the dogmatization and ideologization of culture and the repressive environment imposed by the regime in the, in the previous decade, when many intellectuals were marginalized and Cuba aligned with the Soviet bloc. These new artists forever transformed the conservative cultural policy that had prevailed, pushing the recently created Ministry of Culture towards a more liberal focus. They developed a free, contemporary, and internationally open artistic practice, taking a critical stance, permitted to a certain point, and driven by an environment of great cultural effervescence. As, as new artists and, and critics, uh, we confronted power in an ideological and cultural battle. That horizontal pressure achieved greater openness and flexibility in institutions and institutional circuits partially liber liberalizing cultural politics, uh, col cultural policies, or at least their application. Artists became the almost singular subjects of a critical reflection that was not taking place in academia, media, or unions, etc. Of course, there were episodes of censorship and repression but many gains were made through this steady effort, triggering a process of contestation, openness, and resistance. Espacio Aglutinador was born in this climate and contributed to it greatly. Having started in the visual arts, this critical culture then expanded to all artistic disciplines including literature. They deconstructed official rhetoric and representations, analyzing the reality of the failed project of the Cuban revolution. This spontaneous movement had transformed the world of culture uh, by, by the 1990s and laid the foundation for the extraordinary events we are witnessing today in Cuba, where artists, curators, writers, musicians, and other intellectuals lead the awakening of civil society and the political opposition to the, to the regime. This move from critical art to artivism and to peaceful political action both spontaneous and organized, can be seen, for example, in the San Isidro movement and in 27 N, N, 27N group, the later born out of the spontaneous demonstration of hundreds of intellectuals outside the Ministry of Culture to demand freedom of expression, civil rights, and democratic change in the country. Tania Bruguera, one of, uh, of the central figures of this new art, has played an enormous role in this whole process. 
Many of these artists have suffered harassment, prison, and have been forced into exile despite the solidarity of the Cuban and international uh, uh, cultural community in a wave of repression rarely seen in times of peace. But the new reality of independence and confrontation has been opened up as uh, we see impactfully expressed on social media. Espacio Aglutinador was a precursor of this new era and the bravery and resolve of Ceballos a source of inspiration. Aglutinador has also been a precedent for projects such as Havana's uh, uh, 00 Biennial, an independent biennial launched in uh, 2018 by the artist Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara, currently in prison, in prison serving a, a, a five-year sentence for nothing. And the curator Janelis Nunez Leiva, uh, currently in exile. And well, also the, the Hannah Arendt Institute of Artivism, uh, which Bruguera has managed to maintain in her house in Old Havana, where she has developed a commendable program. And we have the, the, the Hannah Arendt Institute here now in Documenta. In contrast to the Soviet Union's apartment art, Aglutinador did not hide by limiting itself to a group of friends. They defied repression by publicizing their events and opening their doors to the public. The small space would always be overflowing with people and it became a lively informal meeting place and space for dialogue. The impressive program they have advanced has been one of the most cutting edge and necessary of all the art spaces in Cuba, and without a doubt, the most positively unorthodox. It was the result of a vision and of enthusiasm of those who have participated in it, since the physical conditions were very limited. And uh, well, we have uh, here, uh, the agglutinador's small space has been uh, reproduced at real size. So after I finish uh, reading these notes, I, I would invite you to go with me and I will show you the, the space inside. And, and also, well, they, well, they uh, work under a very limited budget. Uh, uh, with funds coming from the organizers themselves or small donations primarily from artists as well as auctions and a few subsidies received after Aglutinador had consolidated its uh, reputation. The exhibitions didn't just occupy the small living room of Ceballos' home. They extended into the kitchen moving into the bathroom, out into the garden, and onto the house's facade, invading the only bedroom. It is fascinating to feel the dialogue produced there between a living domestic space and art. Ceballos has lived in her house together with art, has shared her intimate space with it, she has raised her child there and fought the hard fight of daily existence in Cuba. If an exposition in a Swiss kitchen uh, can become famous, Ceballos Kitchen has been home not to one exhibition, but to a whole a, a monthly agenda of different artists. She has never intended uh, to turn her home into a gallery, but rather into something different, hybrid, hard to name, fitting for the atypical character of her project. Right now, the space holds a tattoo studio for artists 
where students from the San Alejandro Art School work. The importance and novelty of the program carried out by Aglutinador has given it a seal of prestige that has made it a cultural reference point and helped it to force authorities to tolerate it. Its reputation has transcended Cuban borders. It has participated in international events and been named in selections of the most important galleries in the world. But it is far from receiving the recognition, the recognition it deserves. The list of artists who have exhibited there over the course of more than a hundred individual and collective exhibitions is impressive, as well as the authors published in their modest selection of catalogs. The revival of Chago Armada, a great Cuban artist marginalized since the 1970s. The Carlos Garaycoa show where Ezequiel Suarez broke the space ceiling in a surprise action, alluding to the exhibit's theme of Havana in ruins. The performances by Santiago Sierra and Tania Bruguera. Uh, uh, the exhibition of the work created in prison by Angel Delgado, who served a six month sentence for a performance in, in 1990. The hip hop concert by Omni Zona Franca, the event dedicated to tattooing. These are just some highlights of Aglutinador's legendary program, a list that even includes an individual exhibition from none other than Ross Blechner. Not to mention the failed attempt to host an exhibit of South Korean artists curated by Yoo Young Kim, which uh, was impeded by the regime. Aglutinador has developed anti-conventional programs that have made it into an open artistic and cultural laboratory. A prime example of this is the show Curators Go Home, organized in 2008, whose anarchism, a, a, critic, a critical of the conventions of the art world, was followed a year later by a provocative prize awarded in a raffle instead uh, uh, of by a, a, a jury. These were non-curatorial projects that symbolically questioned in the words of Ceballos, quote, the hierarchical biased and reiterative rights in the selection of artists for national and international exhibitions and events, unquote. This was contradicted by the 2011 Curators Come Home, a program that invited four international curators to present exhibitions. The contrast between these two opposing projects sought to affirm how, again in the words of uh, Sandra, Opposing concepts, political affiliations, ideas, philosophies, religions, and proposals can coexist in a single space, end quote. Out of a respect for diversity. This democratic orientation, subscribing to Chantal Mouffe's notion of the political, as the dimension of antagonism constitutive of society has governed the spirit of agglutinative tolerance in the space, in contrast with the univocal and author authoritative policies of the Cuban regime. Lumbung is about equity, distribution, and mutual aid and these have been fundamental traits of Aglutinador. Despite being a space with a fragile economy, they have destined funds from their donations to grants for low-income artists, several of whom were self-taught to carry out projects, both at Aglutinador and elsewhere, 
including the Havana Biennial. This same generosity manifested itself in their support of the Cristo Salvador Gallery, another independent space active for several years. The work of Aglutinador has not uh, limited uh, to Ceballos' modest uh, dwelling. Its uh, Brook program takes shows into artists' own studios and houses, and the Museo de Arte Maniaco, Aglutinador's mobile museum, is dedicated to showing and legitimizing artists with work highly expressive of their inner, inner world in relation to society and politics, which included both graduate artists and self-taught artists outsiders in another effort to break down divisions. Bringing attention to the art that has been left behind on the sidelines has been one of the space's more fertile lines of action. This includes the cycle of six exhibitions called Malditos de la Postguerra, the dam of the post-war era, that presented Cuban artists of different generations who have suffered repression, discrimination, and obscurity for a variety of reasons. Sandra Ceballos has been one of these damned. She has developed a strong personal body of work, primarily as a painter, in addition to her work and dedication to Aglutinador, which, uh, which she has devoted her life to. To maintain this space in the face of official hostility has caused her marginalization from the cultural institutions where she has been unable to exhibit her work for 20 years. She is in exile within her own country. The freedom born out of repression comes at a price, but it's worth it. Uh, I would invite you uh, to go inside uh, to see the reproduction of Aglutinador space uh, that is uh, to the other side of, of the, of the uh, wall. And then we can have like Q&A, question and answers there. So is that okay to you? Thank you for coming. Thank you.